Okay, derivatives of inverse functions, here's the big picture. So if you're given f of x, then g of x can be the inverse, f to the negative 1 of x, and the derivative of the inverse is equal to 1 over f prime composed of g of x. Let's take a look at an example of this. Example has our function f of x is equal to x cubed minus 5, and we want to find the derivative of the inverse. So we can take the inverse. I'm going to do this in two different ways. We can take the inverse, and to do that we switch x's and y's, and solve for y. So that gives us our g of x. And then we take the derivative of that by, and we can do it a couple different ways. We can use the power rule, 1 third x plus 5 to the negative 2 thirds. Or we can use this and get g prime of x equals 1 over uh, f prime. So we need to calculate f prime, and it's... 3x squared, so we get 3, but instead of x, we replace it with g of x, and g of x is x plus 5 to the 1 third, and then we have to take that and square it. And you'll notice that these are exactly the same. There are also inverse trig functions. Okay, there's also inverse trig functions. So, for instance, if I had f of x is equal to sine x, the inverse is sine to the negative 1 of x, and the derivative is cos x, and f prime of g of x is equal to cos of sine to the negative 1 of x. We need a picture to help us with this. So if I draw a right triangle and I have an angle here and I have some variables, so my sine of my angle is equal to x, then sine of my angle is equal to x then I know the missing side through Pythagoras is 1 minus x squared, and cosine of this picture is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse, which is root 1 minus x squared, and g prime of x is equal to 1 over f prime of g of x from the equation in the previous section, and I get this, and therefore sine negative 1 of x, the derivative of that is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. You can go through a similar procedure to find the remainder of the trigonometric ratios, and they look like this. Cos tan, and the inverses. And we can use these in an example. So let's calculate the derivative of the inverse of secant of 2 e to the x plus 1, and then evaluate it at x equals to 1. So we're going to use the chain rule with u equaling to x plus 1 and secant inverse of u, we can know is 1 over the absolute value of u times u squared plus 1. That's the derivative of the inverse. And we are trying to find the derivative of secant inverse of 2e to the x plus 1. And so we get to e to the x plus 1's absolute value, and to e to the x plus 1 squared plus 1, 
and we have to multiply that by the derivative of 2e to the x plus 1. That gives us, this stays the same, absolute 2e to the x plus 1, and the square root times the derivative of 2e to the x, which is 2e to the x, and the derivative of 1, which is uh, 0. And now I evaluate it for x is equal to 1. For x, getting this, and I grab my calculator to get an approximate value if I want an approximation.